is Chris. Welcome back to another episode of Stories in Cardboard. Um, my original intention today was to do a follow-up video from the Clay Hopper video that I did the other day and show some more PCL cards from the 1940s. But I decided to go in a different direction when uh, Terry of TJ Mac Vintage Cards did a video and, and we had a brief discussion in the comments section discussing a couple of 1930s catchers. And I had been planning to do a, a profile of this particular player at some point, and I decided I, I just didn't want to wait. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'll probably do the follow up to the Clay Hopper video in the next video. So, who we are talking about today is we have Gabby Hartnett. Gabby Hartnett is in the Hall of Fame, he played for the uh, Chicago Cubs. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about him, give you a little bit of background on him, and tell you why he's significant in baseball history. And then I'll show you some more cards of him. So he was born as Leo Hartnett on December 20th in uh, 1900 in Woonsocket, Rhode Island. And he was the oldest of 14 children. Now, his dad was a semi-pro baseball catcher and was kind of known to have a pretty, pretty strong arm himself. And Leo began to play baseball at a young age and eventually would play for the town team as a catcher, just like his father. And he had a very strong arm as well. And it's believed that John McGraw once sent Jesse Burkett, who was a scout at the time, to evaluate him. But ultimately, he thought he had, that his hands were too small and the Giants passed on him. Now, eventually, a Cub scout came around and they liked what they saw and they offered him a $2,500 signing bonus, which he accepted. Now, at the time, the Cubs had a, a catcher call, uh, named Bob O'Farrell, who was actually considered a really good catcher at the time, one, one of the better catchers in baseball. Now, uh, he, Leo got his nickname of Gabby because he was extremely shy when, when he was signed with the Cubs. And the, the Cub players and the, the uh, media people, they actually nicknamed him Gabby for his lack of wanting to talk. Now, he actually became someone who, who was very vocal and, and talked a lot. But when he first started with the Cubs, he didn't say a whole lot. Now, um, O'Farrell was actually injured in, in 1924, which actually opened the door for, for Gabby Hartnett to, uh, to, to kind of show what he could do. And, and once he started playing, he never relinquished that job. And from that point on, he kind of developed and wanted to the, into one of the, the better catchers in baseball. Um, along with some guys like Bill Dickey, Ernie Lombardi, and Mickey Cochran. Those were pretty much your, your better catchers during, during this time. So now that we have a little bit of background on how he became one of the better catchers in baseball, let's look at some of the historical moments that he was involved in. The first one, in 1932, the Cubs were playing the Yankees in the World Series, and those of you that are familiar with that World Series may recognize that as the World Series where Babe Ruth is believed to, to have called his home run shot off Cubs pitcher Charlie Root in the fifth inning of uh, Game 3 of that World Series. Well, guess who was the catcher for the Cubs that day and probably had the best view of that whole scene as it was going down? Yes, Gabby Hartnett. Gabby Hartnett was the catcher that day and had literally a, a front row seat to see this as it unfolded. Now, a, a Hartnett biographer would later recall what Gabby said about the Bambinos called shot. And he said he didn't want to take anything away from the babe as he, he kind of felt a gratitude towards Babe Ruth, as he said, because uh, the babe allowed a lot of players during his time to actually make pretty good money playing baseball. But he said pretty emphatically that Babe Ruth did not call his shot, that he held up his, his left index finger and said, it only takes one to hit. Now, that may be true. Some would say that maybe Gabby Hartnett actually had something against Babe Ruth because he did keep him from winning a World Series. But regardless, you know, no matter how you kind of fall on that line as, as to whether you think Babe Ruth called his shot or not, it was still pretty amazing that, that he kind of said it only takes one, and then he ultimately put the ball into the stands. So that was the first thing that, that Gabby Hartnett 
the first historical moment that he was kind of a part of, which which I think is just amazing. Uh, now, the second one came in the 1934 All-Star Game. Some people may remember that as the All-Star Game where uh, the New York Giants' Carl Hubble struck out five people consecutively, those five people being Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, Jimmy Fox, Al Simmons, and Joe Cronin. Uh, and again, guess who was the catcher that that was behind the plate when Hubble was pitching? Yes, Gabby Hartnett. He was the one. Now, I want to take a minute here because I think sometimes when you when you hear stories about players like this, and especially when there's not a whole lot of, of film from back then, it's easy to just kind of think of this in a black and white kind of scenario, like, like it's just a story. But think about it for a minute. He was there when Babe Ruth called his shot. He was behind the plate when this happened. He was also the one catching Carl Hubble when he struck out all those players in succession. I mean, I just find that amazing, and it's just incredible to me. But Now, the third thing I want to talk about was what was referred to as the homer in the gloaming. This happened in 1938. The Cubs were, were just kind of floundering around as a 500 baseball team, and in uh, late July, they were five and a half games behind the Pittsburgh Pirates, and the Cubs divided, decided to uh, fire Charlie Grimm, who had actually had quite a bit of success with the Cubs. And they actually named Gabby Hartnett as a player manager for the rest of the season. The Cubs kind of went on a, on a late season run. And uh, in the second to last series of the year, they were a game and a half back of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, with a series coming up against them in Chicago. Now, in the first game, the Cubs won in the first game, cutting the lead to a half a game. And then in the second game, they were tied going into the ninth inning. Now, and, and it was actually growing dark outside. And this was before you had night baseball and definitely way before the Cubs had, had night baseball. And at the time, it, it was kind of customary that if games got called, you had to you had to play them in their entirety all over again the next day. So there was potential of this game having to be played completely over. But in the bottom of the ninth, with two uh, two outs, Hartnett came up and hit a walk off home run, which is actually a lot of people said they couldn't even see the ball as it cleared the fence. Uh, Gabby Hartnett knew instantly when he hit it though that that it was a home run. Later, this would be called uh, the Homer in the Gloaming after a popular song of the day called Roman in the Gloaming. So that is Gabby Hartnett. Uh, just, just an incredible person in baseball history, in my opinion. So what we have here, um, this, this first thing that I'm showing you, uh, this is a 1936 R311. Uh, it's a premium card. And this was actually believed to be distributed as a send-in for turning in Diamond Stars wrappers. So basically, if you turned in 15 wrappers, I think it was for baseball, uh, you got one of these cards or photos in the mail. Um, this is actually my favorite Gabby Hartnett thing. I don't know. I, I just like it. And some of you might be surprised because I'm that person that loves colors, but... I also love the, the classic look of some black and white photos, and I think this is just great as, you know, he's he's posing here with his catcher's mitt and, and squatting down. So I, I really like this. Uh, the next thing I'm going to show is from the same set, and this is a team picture of the Chicago Cubs. Um, this is showing 1935 as the team. Now, I actually think some of these were distributed between 1935 and 1936. Um, and as you know, that or may know, that the uh, the Diamond Stars were distributed from 1934 to 1936. And this is just a really cool picture. Of course, it has Gabby Hartnett on it. And I really like this guy right here on the end with, with his suit there and uh, it's got Charlie Root, the guy who gave up the home run to Babe Ruth, is pictured on here as well. And it also has Charlie Grimm, who, of course, would later later be fired. But it's got some other people, too. And maybe at another time, I've got a few more cards from this set that I may show at another time. And I may go into a little more detail uh, about this Cubs team here. Um, 
So let's see, the next thing I think I'm going to show, let's start with, with kind of some, some items that are not very expensive. Well, at least one here. I had another card that I was gonna show, but I don't have it here, so I'll just skip it for now. Uh, this is a 1960 Fleer Gabby Hart. Now you can get these really inexpensively. He's also in the 1961 Fleer. I don't have the 1961 Fleer card, but, but these are really inexpensive if you want to pick up a card of, of Gabby Hartnett where you don't have to break the bank on it. Now this next card is from a set called 1930, it's from 1936 and it's from the SNS game card set. And essentially what you would do, it came 52 cards in a pack and it came with a, a game board, I believe, and you, you could actually simulate a baseball game by the cards that, that came in the box. Again, this just a cool little picture here as he's squatting down in his catcher's equipment. And this next one, let's see if I can get this to stand up. Earlier I was able to get this to stand up. Maybe not. Okay, this is a 1936 um, Gaudi, or I'm sorry, not Gaudi, uh, National Chickle. This is a fine pen set. And again, this I think this was distributed as an in-store promotion. And this also has Lon Warnicky on it as well. Who I may do a player profile on him at some point in the future is he's kind of an interesting character who actually had a really good career as a player and later was also a, um, a, a baseball umpire. And then the next card, this is actually from 1936 Gaudi from, from what is called the wide pen set. Again, I, I really like kind of cards where where catchers are shown in their equipment. I think I think they're just really interesting. And then the last card, it's one that a lot more people are, are familiar with, I guess, is the 33 Gaudi. Um, just a you know another great card of, of a Hall of Famer who had a very significant place in baseball history. So that's what I have for you guys today. That's Gabby Hartnett of the Chicago Cubs. And again, he was a Hall of Famer. I hope you enjoyed this. I know I went a little longer than I normally do, but I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And I hope you can grow to appreciate guys like this who had a tremendous place in baseball history. Take care and we'll see you next time.